It seems a ridiculous notion that you could drown in shallow water, especially after you have survived the deep. It seems strange that you could drown in something that you could handle. There are some concepts, I just pulled a few, that will keep you from drowning in shallow water. And you might want to jot these down. Don't take the presence of the storm to indicate the absence of God. I'm not talking about the storms that rain down water and the lightning and the thunder and all of that. I'm talking about storms that other people can't see. Because you get up out of the bed every morning and you, you put your hair up and put your makeup on and, and they don't know you put your smile on just like you did your makeup and because you are going through a secret storm. And when we get in a storm, we have a tendency to wonder, where is God? Because we buy into this notion that if God was with us, we would have no storm. That if God were really with us, everything would go smoothly. How could God be with us and we have cancer? How? How could my house be on fire and God be with me? I looked for it. I didn't see him. I didn't see him. I looked in front of me. I thought he'd lead the way. I didn't see him. But you cannot see in a storm. That's why he told you to walk by faith and not by sight. In fact, if you really want to see God do his best work, get in trouble. I know you think God does his best work when you're dancing in the church and you're raising your hand and all of that stuff. No, 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 no. The Bible said he is the very, very present help in the time of trouble. If you're looking for God, He's in the storm. He is with you in the storm. He promised. You never promise the obvious. You give a promise when you know that something is going to come to make you doubt. Whenever God promises you something, he says, you may not have it in your sensual realm right now, but I promise you, did he promise you anything? You don't steer through the storm based on the conditions of the storm. You steer through the storm based on the solidarity of your faith and understand that this too shall pass. I don't have no details, but I am coming out of this. I wish I had some faith in this room. You ought to make a declaration right now that the devil can hear, I am coming out of this. The storm has started. I don't know what all I'm going to have to go through, but let's set a pin on the end of it and say, I shall come forth as pure gold. I may have to wait. I may have to hold my peace, but when everything is said and done, I will come out of this. Because he's with me. He's with me. He is with me in the storm. Let's settle on that. He is with me in the storm. I don't know whether you're with me. I don't know whether you're with me. But let's settle this much right now. I know I got at least one passenger. The Lord is with me in the storm. Pull yourself together and quit tripping because you in the process. God is processing you. He ain't through with you. He going to fix it. Let me tell you this right here. Why are you tripping? I look back on my life at all that I've been through. I have built up enough reservoir that living in the car taught me that this ain't it. So the things I'm going through now, I know this ain't it. That he gonna come get me in a minute. There are times in life we can feel overwhelmed, like the pressure's too much. A lady told me how things had come against her at work and she said, I can't take it anymore. 
the worry, the stress, the demands, it's too much to handle. But Paul said in 1 Corinthians, God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted with more than you can bear. Paul was saying, God will not let you face more pressure than you can handle. When an architect designs a building, a big skyscraper, he doesn't just design the outside. That's important, but it's of no use if he doesn't design the inner structure. How much wind it will face, how much equipment will be on it, how deep the piers in the ground, how thick the foundation. The architect specifically designs each structure so it can withstand the pressure. The good news is your architect is the Most High God. When he laid out the plan for your life, he calculated everything you would face. He took into account every hurt, every injustice, every mistake, and he designed your beams big enough. He put in you the determination, the stamina, that no matter what comes against you, it will not be too much to bear. You've been designed to withstand the storms, designed to endure until the dream comes to pass. You may not be able to see it, but your walls are strong enough. Your foundation is deep enough. You can bear whatever comes your way. He didn't forget about what environment you'd be in, what conditions you would face. Nothing you face will cause you to collapse under the weight. You need to remind yourself, I've been designed to withstand. I am determined enough. I'm strong enough. I am well able. Now, an architect doesn't wait till the pressure comes. He doesn't wait till the middle of the storm to decide what kind of structure to build. It's designed before one concrete truck shows up. The specs are studied, calculated, and approved before construction ever begins. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, your specs were carefully designed. When you face big challenges, that means you have strong infrastructure. You don't really know what's in you until you get some weight on you. When something happens that we've never faced, it's easy to think, I can't handle this. The truth is, you wouldn't be facing it unless you could handle it. The very fact that it happened is a sign that you are well able. It wasn't a surprise to your architect. He knew ahead of time. He took into account winds that you never knew you would encounter. Nothing you face will cause you to collapse. You've been designed to withstand. In your thinking, you can give in and think, oh, this is too much, I can't handle it. That's why the scripture tells us, don't faint in your mind. You are well able. No weapon formed against you is going to prosper. That difficulty didn't come to stay. It came to pass. The psalmist said, you have been fearfully and wonderfully made. It's not just talking about the outside. That's talking about your specs as well, your infrastructure, how God designed things that you can't see, things you would think would cause you to collapse, but out of nowhere, strength rises up. A determination to stand strong and outlast the opposition. You may think you've reached your limits. You've been at that same level a long time. Can I encourage you? You have more floors in you. You've gotten comfortable carrying this much weight. It's no problem. If you could see the plans God has for you, you would notice your beams are much bigger than what you're carrying right now. And with that increase comes more weight. You're going to have more pressure. This is pressure that makes you stretch, makes you grow. Not just difficulties, but positive pressure where you discover you can handle things that you never thought you could handle. What am I saying? You've been designed for everything you're going to face. When you come into things that seem too hard, things that should cause you to collapse, don't worry, God knew they were coming. He already made your beams big enough. Now, it may be uncomfortable. You may have to stretch, but that pressure is not going to stop you. Whatever is in your future, you have the grace to handle it. Now, the key 
is don't lose the battle in your mind. Your mind will say, it's too much. I might believe you if your architect lived down the street. If your architect worked for a firm downtown, he could make a mistake. Your architect is the God who spoke worlds into existence. He doesn't miscalculate. You will never face a situation that you're not designed for.